Good morning. Good morning, Only Bible Church. Did I? I heard the bell. Did the bell go off? Okay, we heard it. All right. All right, if we could gather in and find our seat. All right. We got to call them in from the highways and the byways. <laughs> All right. I'm glad everyone can make it here, and you're definitely welcome to stick around after the service and visit as heartily as you're visiting now, for sure. And uh, while I'm while I'm mentioning sticking around after the service, we have several adult classes and ch children's classes as well. It's a good place to visit it, uh, before God's Word and just share what's going on in your life. I think. Pretty much all the classes are open to if something comes up and someone's talking about something important to them, uh, it's important to the class as well. So uh, this week I have been, I had a sermon prepared early, late last week, early this week, and then I was talking with Summer and, and I was like, no, I don't think that's the sermon I need to preach. So then I had a second sermon prepared and then I told Lucas about that sermon on Wednesday, and then Wednesday afternoon, I still, it's like, I just don't know if that is the sermon. So Wednesday afternoon, I've got the sermons you're going to hear today, but uh, I think the Lord, the Lord led, it, led me to this sermon through circumstances. I was listening to a children's song with Levi, and I thought, and it was, and the song was a, a verse from Habakkuk chapter 3. I was like, oh, that'd be a good call to worship. So then when I got home, I, I wrote that down, and then I just prayed through the book of Habakkuk. It's only a three-chapter book, but I prayed for all in the Bible church. I try to do that, and I, I pray for the church, and I, after praying for our church uh, through the scriptures, I thought, okay, this is what God wants me to preach. So uh, be ready for this. Uh, we're going through another minor prophet, Habakkuk. So it's only a three-chapter book, but I like the minor prophets as well. When we were, on, when we were raising support to go to Thailand, I think some are... It's like, all right, you've done quite a few minor prophets. <laughs> but my name's Brian, if you don't know me. And uh, if you're a visitor, please fill out the visitor pamphlet or the little welcome one sheet of paper uh, card, I guess you would call it, and hand it to someone on the way out, and they'll make sure it gets in the right basket, or you can drop it in one of the baskets out at the back there. Uh, but we just want everyone to feel welcome, and we want to have a record of your uh, visiting us today. Tori's going to be the worship leader today, and uh, he probably has a joke, right? Yeah, He's got I a do. joke, and we, we've got our <laughs> announcements we're going to make and singing happy birthday and happy anniversary. So we've got all that, and we enjoy that. It seems like a family thing to do. Um, but then once the accolades start uh, and uh, we worship the Lord, let's really try to tune our hearts into worshiping God, to worship Him with all of our heart and our, all of our mind and our soul through our singing and praying and then listening to his word. So I'll let Tori start us off. Well, good morning. God is good. And all the time, got a good amount of rain out there. And I, it's good to see the ponds filling up, the reservoirs filling up. People are having to reroute to get here to church. So good news. Well, if you do have announcements, you can make your way forward, and I'll get the, uh, the joke of the day out of the way. Um, yesterday, Amber was out and about with friends, and, and I was on our back porch uh, repainting our Adirondack chairs, and I was painting the second coat yesterday evening, and I'm going, it's starting to get kind of dark, and, and I talked to her, her dad, and He's going, yeah, we're supposed to expect rain here pretty soon. And I'm going, uh-oh, I've got fresh paint. And so that reminded me of this joke here that I'd like to share. <laughs> it seems that there was a little old church out in the countryside, pic picturesque with its painted white clappards, clappards and high steeple. One Sunday, the pastor noticed that his church paint was getting a bit shabby and peeling. He checked out the Sunday ads and found a paint sale at the local hardware store the next day. He went into town and bought three gallons of white latex paint and then went back to the church and began, to, began the job. Having completed the first side, he stood back and admired his work. It was looking great, but he noticed that he had already used over one gallon. 
He didn't want to get, go all the way back into town, so he figured that he'd just thin the pain a little bit. It might, as, it might last long enough to finish the other three sides. So he added a gallon of water to each of the remaining gallons and continued painting. It worked out great. He finished the last three sides with the remaining paint. That night it rained, and it rained hard. The next morning when he stepped outside of the parsonage to admire his work, he saw that the first side was still looking great, but that the pain on the other three sides had washed away. The pastor looked up in the sky in anguish and cried out, Lord, what shall I do? A voice came back from the heavens saying, Repaint and thin no more. <laughs> there you go. Your le lesson for the day. Well, one of. <laughs> Any other announcements? Good morning, all New Church. Um, I just wanted to share a couple um, different announcements. Um, we know Phoebe has been working really hard on Operation Christmas Child, and and um, which is her we call it OCC. And so we've kind of got a little spinoff going off of Operation Christmas Child called Operation Blessing Bags, OBB. And um, do we have do we have slides? Yep. Okay. Good. There should be a slide for it. The focus is on Marion County kids, okay? So we work with the kids from Operation Christmas Child, cr kids from other countries, and, and this is more local. It's for our county kids. And the bags look kind of like this. Um, Jackie Hong just makes, makes these for us, and Phoebe helps out there as well. But we have county kids who are in need of basic hygiene supplies. And as a teacher, I know that nothing will alienate a child more than um, when they don't have those supplies that they need. So um, in these Operation Blessing bags are things like toothpaste, a new toothbrush, deodorant, of course, soap, sometimes pens, papers, things like that. But the most important part of it, not only are we giving them um, hygiene supplies, we have also are giving them God's word in small doses. So we make what we call these blessing boxes, and they're all home, they're homemade. Um, there are different colored, uh, different colored scriptures in here based upon how they're feeling. So it says, read me when you're anxious. Okay, that's a green. So they pull out one scripture that's about about not being anxious from God's word. So um, they're all homemade, and we make these. So we're looking for people to, um, we're looking for boxes right now. This is from Barkman Honey, and Phoebe has cleaned I don't know how many of these for me, and they're a lot of work to clean. But So we're, they could be soap boxes. It can be, we found, um, Merle found screws and nails come in nice little boxes, if you know somebody who's in construction, uh, instead of throwing those away. But as we're, Every time I'm cutting or Tracy's cutting or someone's cutting the scripture, I think about Isaiah 55:11, and it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereunto I sent it. So currently, um, we started in February of 2024, and we currently um, serve Peabody, and um, I've talked with Marion High School, and we're going to pick up Marion this year. And um, so far, the schools I've talked to are very okay with the scripture being in the blessing bags. So um, that's what we're doing. Um, schools that are open to having the blessing boxes in the blessing bags for scripture to go out to the, to the students. Um, so if you're interested, I mean, items, we take items anytime. If you're interested in wanting to help us deliver the bags to the schools, that would be great, or just praying over the bags. But just want to kind of say there is a, a roll off of the Operation Christmas Child into Operation Blessing Bags for our schools. Which leads me to the second announcement. Prayers for our schools. We are um, about, for about three years, three and a half, three years or so, we've been going to all the Marion County schools and we have been praying over the schools. And so this year, that date is Wednesday, August 7th, 
and it's at seven o'clock, and it's at any Marion County school near you. Um, we are still, we have different people at different schools who are the contact people. Um, Fenner, um, Ginger Becker, Bethany Carlson, Mel David, and Emma Jacobs Jacobson. Um, Hillsborough's still to be decided, still in talks with a few people. Marion, it'll be uh, Jen Getterman, Alicia Ninstead, and myself. Peabody, Jason, and Anna Unruh, and uh, Tammy Tangerman. And at Gossel, Bradley Pinner. So we have people in each location who'll be there to kind of coordinate that on August 7th at 7 o'clock. So, just PM, 7 in the evening. Okay, thank you. Good morning again. Um, we had a fantastic week at Bible school. Um, we had 145 kids that were there each day. Over the week, we had 162 different kids. There were 40 adult staff members and 20 youth staff that helped. Uh, the money that was raised went to the food bank, and that was $960, plus lots of food items that kids brought as well. Um, there were 232 Vacation Bible School shirts that are passed around the county with John 316 on the front. And we served over 350 people for the hot dog lunch on Friday. So it was a fabulous week. Um, we had quite a few people from our church that helped. If you helped, would you stand up, please? Um, it takes a village, and this is just a few of the ones that gave their time this week and were there and helped. And if you made cookies or, yeah, if you prayed for us, I mean, it really does take a village. So I appreciate everything that you guys do to help support Bible school. Um, and next week is um, the end of the baby bottle project for Kansans for Life. And so I did not get here early enough. So here is your reminder. So I'm just gonna pass these around if you would like to take one to remind you to bring those back next week, that would be great. And of course, we'll accept them late too. Last year we raised a little over $1,900. So I'm hoping to match that or beat it. So thank you. Good morning. I just want to say thank you. You guys are so generous. Uh, I, I love being part of this church and seeing your generosity. Uh, just hearing about the Operation Christmas Child boxes and the OBB operation. Uh, and then you guys filling out the uh, uh, youth camp uh, meals. I have a few more slots, but uh, yeah, it'll be in the back if you want to sign up. But already it looks really full. Uh, so I thank you so much for that. Uh, parents, if you have any uh, kids that are going into high school, it's still not too late to sign up for that. So uh, get with me uh, as quickly as you can. We have uh, plenty big enough uh, uh, cabin. So uh, if you have kids for that, let me know. Uh, also, uh, for the sound and tech people and uh, worship team, if I can get a quick meeting after church to talk about scheduling the new uh, mixer and trying that out with the worship team during the week, that'd be much appreciated. So we'll just meet in the back after church real quick and see what everyone's schedule looks like. So thank you. I just wanted to offer a date night for you guys that aren't too busy Saturday night. There's a concert in Burns, Kansas, the edge of Marion County. If you haven't ever been there, Google it. But um, from 6 to 8 at the park, if you find a water tower, you'll find the park. But it's uh, Rusty Ryerson. There's a flyer there in the back. But um, from 6 to 8 in the park, bring a lawn chair and enjoy the evening. That's, it's, actually, it's next Saturday night. Next Saturday night. Yep. I've got a final announcement. Maggie wanted me to announce that she's got her graduation open house at the end of the month, June 30th. She wanted me, she's worried that people were gonna think she had it and didn't invite you guys and you were left out. You've not been left out, it's just later than usual. So June 30th, two to 5 p.m. at our house in Hillsboro. What a blessing to have so many announcements and uh, don't forget to look ahead and make sure that you don't have any surprises with nursery, children's church, special ushers, youth, 
youth story and worship leader. Uh, we've got Father's Day recognition next week, and coming up is the fireworks, so we're going to have that on Friday, July 5th, so fireworks, ice cream, and fellowship. Um, any birthdays? Oh. It's an angel food cake. It's light. <laughs> It went from very light to just a little bit light. <laughs> Any anniversaries? 30? 30 for Brad and Patty. All right. Lucas and Katie. 15. 15, so. <laughs> Any others? Oh, we got him in the back. How many? Four, 25? Uh, Penner. I'm terrible. There you go, Kelly and Mark, thank you. I need name tags even after we just got the pastor, right? <laughs> so uh, let's sing happy anniversary to those. At this time, we will quiet our hearts and prepare for what God has for us this morning.
great. <laughs> Please stand with me if you are able. We'll join together responsibly in the call to worship. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is your faithful love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. From eternity to eternity, the Lord's faithful love is, is toward those who fear him. Bless the Lord. Amen. Praise band, come on forward. Good morning. Good to see everyone here in the sanctuary. Those of you who are online, we are just so thankful that you joined us today. Uh, Kevin is off grandparenting, but um, Mike and Kim came back to see us again, and it's always a pleasure to have them. From Psalm 28, 6 through 9. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. My heart leaves for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. The Lord is the strength of his people, a fortress of salvation for his anointed one. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd and carry them forever.
Praise the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. He wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. He sets the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. your neighbor.
from Psalm 1611. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand.
Please bow with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you. We are so thankful for this morning, for the renewing of the, the crops and the ground with the rain. Lord, we just ask your blessing and your presence among us this morning. Lord, I was reading something earlier this week that described how heaven is translucent and crystal. And, and Lord, I believe that's because we need to see what heaven really is all about. It's all about you, Lord, that we here on earth, we have so many nature and the beautiful sunrises and sunsets and waterfalls. And Lord, heaven can't compare is what we read and what we hear. Lord, help us to understand your beauty and your presence among us. Be with Pastor Brian as he brings the message and help us to reach into our hearts to hear what you have for each one of us to hear today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Kids, come on down. Good morning. How are you guys this morning? Good. Good. How are you? Okay, I brought something here with me today, and Mr. Wheeland over there spotted them already. What is this a jar of? M&M's. Who loves M&M's? Yeah. Do all your hands go up? I like M&M's too. Okay. Do you like them? Yes. Now. What is your favorite color of M&M? Ivan, what's your, what's your which, one, which flavor is, which color is your favorite? The red one is your favorite? What about you? Which color is the best? The green one? Lane, what about you? Lane says blue. Who likes the red one the best? Do you like the red one? Does anybody like the yellow one the best? Or the orange one? You like, you like the yellow? Yes, they're all good, aren't they? Yeah. I like them all. Now, here is something that's kind of funny about these. Even though you may think the red one tastes better than the blue one, do you know that they have the exact same yummy sweetness inside? So the green one tastes just like the red one, and the blue one tastes just like the yellow one. There's no difference in there. No difference. They all taste the same. So, even though, yeah, <laughs> this is so tempting, isn't it, to grab this? You're going to get some later. Okay. So, even though these M&Ms look different on the outside, do we look different on the outside? Yeah. We don't? Who has blonde hair like Mrs. Peterson does? I see a few blonde hairs, yes. Okay. Yeah. Raise, or raise your hand. Let's raise your hand because it's hard to stand. Raise your hand if you have blue eyes. Yeah. Who has I blue eyes? Like you don't know yours are brown. <laughs> you can't see your own eyes, can you? Yes, blue. Okay. Uh, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you have curly hair. Yes, curly hair. Who has curly hair? You have you have curly hair on the back. Okay. Uh, raise your hand if you're right-handed. Who writes with their right hand? Who writes with their left hand? Do we have any lefties? Yep, we've got some lefties too. You can do both. <laughs> That's even more special. That's okay. So, even though we're all different on the outside, that makes us unique and special, doesn't it? So just like these M&Ms look different on the outside, we're unique and special too. 
Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to read a verse in the Bible here. Okay, this is from Psalm. Do you know where Psalms is? Is it in the uh, Old or the New Testament? Does anybody know that? It's in the middle of the Bible. It's in the middle of the Bible, you're right. Is that in the Old or the New Testament? New. New? Okay, so Psalm 139.14 says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Wow. Yeah, have you heard that verse before? Have you heard no. that? Okay, so even though we're all different, do you know that God will never create another Ivan? There will never be another Ivan. There will never be another Lane. Maybe, Everyone is unique maybe, and special. Maybe, even, no, you, even if you're a maybe, twin, maybe, there's differences. Maybe, maybe, yes. <laughs> okay, but listen, here's, I'm almost done. One way we're all the same, M&Ms are filled with what in the inside? Chocolate. They're filled, they're made to be filled. If, if these M&Ms aren't filled with that yummy chocolate, it's just an empty shell, right? And they, they wouldn't taste very good, the shell. And we're just like that. We're just like that. We're made to be filled. What can we be filled with? God's what? God's love. We're made to be filled with his love, too. And are M&Ms easy to share? Can you easily share these M&Ms? I could easily pass these out, and we could share them. I know. God's love is easy to share, too. Okay? So we, when you go get these M&Ms at the end of the aisle, I want you, every time you have M&Ms out, I want, <laughs> you're not going to get a whole jar. You're going to get a little package. But every time, and adults, too, every time they see M&Ms now, I want them to think that these M&Ms, even though they're different, that makes us unique, and that they're filled with yummy sweetness, just like we can be filled with God's love, okay? And share that. Okay, so I want you to fold your hands and we're going to say a little prayer. Got <laughs> no more M&Ms. Okay. Okay, Father God, thank you for M&Ms and thank you for creating us all to be different and special and unique. We ask that you help us spread your precious love to everyone we know. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, now listen. Ruby at the very end over there has an M&M packet for each of you. I believe the kids know where they're headed. We do have the nursery available for those that are new here today, and we have a children's church um, to the, what would be my right, but your left. What a blessing it is to have this many kids up here, and, and you parents and families that bring these kids each, each Sunday, just, I would encourage you to, if you have that, inkling to want to be up here and do the children's moments or to help out with the kids, please get with one of us and we'll get you signed up. At this time, we've come to the worship and giving. If you would bow with me in prayer, we'll bless this offering. Heavenly Father, we've come to, through a great spring, of planting the crops and and good good rains lord and and cool temperatures lord sometimes it's so uh we put all the work into planting and and even in in your in your word lord that we we tell others about you but we don't see the reward we don't see the reaping lord we just ask that you be with the offering of each one here today Bless that, multiply it, use it in ways through this church that reach to the ends of the earth, Lord, that, that only is, is known well among those that believe in you, Lord. We're just so thankful for the gift and the giver. We bless this in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Psalm 141 begins with, O Lord, I call upon you, hasten to me, give ear to my voice when I call to you, let my prayers be counted as incense before you. And this encourages us to bring our prayers to the Lord. I've got some I'd like to share with you for you to be praying for this week and with me right now as well. Um, one, an answer to prayer, Isaac and Emma's wedding went well, and we had, Joan had asked for a prayer request that he would give his speech well. And then the day of, he was really nervous, and, or the day before as well, and we were practicing, and I reminded him, remember, everyone's praying for you. And you, you could see a peace come over him upon knowing that you guys are praying for him and God to answer those prayers. So that's encouraging. Uh, we'll also thank the Lord for the rain. And then we have uh, a couple surgeries to be praying for. Tori's dad, Dave, is having surgery tomorrow morning. So prayers for that. And then that he slows down for a good recovery. I know that can be hard to do as well. And we'll pray for Lou Ann. She's having a surgery on Wednesday. Don't know the time yet. She's going to get hear about that soon. I think on Tuesday they let her know. So we'll pray for Tori's dad and for Lou Ann with their surgeries this week. And then right now, Don Lee and her daughters are traveling to Michigan to put their uh, Don's mother in a nursing home. So be praying for their trip and for that activity that might be hard for them. And also, they may be saying goodbye to Don's father. He's not been responsive, and they, this may be their, their last goodbye with him. Yes. Um, Leanne and I also are having surgery uh, next Thursday the 20th. We had a little bit earlier. Thursday the 20th? Tawana gallbladder. Okay. Tawana is having gallbladder surgery Thursday the 20th. So we'll be praying for her as well. All right, uh, I'll pray for these things. I invite you to pray in your hearts with me. And then in the, at the end, then we'll join together and pray the prayer that Jesus gave us to learn from. So let's pray. Father, we know that you are a, a good God who answers prayers in your wisdom and power and uh, foresight. And so we rely on you and we trust you. Uh, we pray that you give us even more faith to trust you when things aren't going the way we expect them to. And uh, if you answer our prayers in a way differently than we hoped for, I pray that you give us faith to trust you with, with your wisdom, Lord. And we thank you for answering the prayers that many have prayed. We thank you that Isaac and Emma's wedding went well, that Jonah's speech went well, and, and that was a, a reminder to him about uh, the power of prayer. A reminder to all of us, we thank you for the rain that we have been receiving, Lord, for you providing for the crops and uh, for the earth, Lord. And Lord, we pray for, for uh, Dawn as she travels with her kids, Lord. We pray for those ladies that keep them safe on the road and prepare their hearts for the duty and task they have in front of them. We pray that her mom will transition uh, well into this new place, Lord, and you'll be with her health as it continues to uh, deteriorate, Lord, be with her spirit, and I pray that you would just uh, comfort her and be with uh, Dawn and Amanda and Katie as they may be saying goodbye uh, to Dawn's dad, Lord, uh, just pray that you would uh, give them wisdom and, and uh, perception to see how to handle that situation and that you would comfort their hearts. We pray for Tori's dad and uh, also for uh, Lou Ann and Tawana with their upcoming surgeries. We pray that you would give them, uh, you would just show mercy to them and, and grant the surgeon's skill and wisdom as they operate. We pray that it would lead to uh, uh, restored health and help them each to recover as they, as they need to be and following the doctor's instructions, and that you would just strengthen their bodies. Lord, we pray for the world and all the turmoil that it's going through in, in uh, every corner of the world. We pray that we would look to you in these times. We pray that we would see how we can be a source of peace and uh, comfort to those in our part of the world, and that we wouldn't be uh, contributing to distress, Lord, but we would be uh, spreading your joy and your good news. 
Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayers, and I ask that you would hear the prayers of each of us as we uh, say to you the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand with me as we join together in reading this morning's scripture. It is Habakkuk. Uh, I, I get stuck with that name today, but luckily throughout the scripture, it's we're good, well, except for that one. The oracle that Habakkuk, the prophet, saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not hear? Or cry to you, violence, and you will not save. Why do you make me see iniquity, and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed, and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, so justice goes forth perverted. Oh, was that all I had? Okay. <laughs> and all God's people said? That's the beginning of the passage, so I don't know if that's, you, we feel like saying amen to that, right? So I was like, that's all right if we don't say amen to that. But we can say amen to say this is God's word, and there's more to it than that, and we're going get, to get into that for sure. Uh, this is, the, the book of Habakkuk is... Uh, the prophet Habakkuk, the oracle that he saw, and he's asking why. And in one sense, he's just saying, why do bad things happen? And uh, God gives an answer. And then he asks a another question following God's answer, and God gives another response. And then the book ends with Habakkuk give, uh, saying a prayer. So it's two questions and two responses and then a prayer. And today we're going to look at his first question and God's response and then a little bit of Habakkuk's response to, to God's response. Um, one thing we can learn from this book is that it's okay to ask God why. And it's, it's, we have the example of his prophet. He, he wasn't rebuked for expressing his, his distress and his fear and his doubts. He wasn't rebuked by God, but God gave him a response. God wants us to call out to him with how we're feeling and with our confusion we can call out to him for answers. And uh, I think we can learn a lot from this book, and I do think God uh, led me to preach from this. It's, it's going to be a few sermons um, going through the book, but I think it's going to be instructive for us and informative to, to help us understand God and his ways. So the, the first, the first uh, verse is the oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw. So he wrote it down, but this was something he saw, this conversation that he had with God. It was in a vision in his mind or in his heart. But it is an oracle from God. Habakkuk is a prophet. And uh, these questions about evil in the world and bad things happening, uh, it was all centered around Israel. So his first question here that Tori read it was his countrymen that were sinning against their own countrymen. It was God's nation, Israel, the people were, were wicked. And he, he was wondering, why is this happening? And we may feel uh, similar about our nation when we see wickedness in our nation as well. Um, and one thing I want us to think about as we look at this oracle from Habakkuk is that this, first of all, this was um, about Israel. And we can relate to it. Israel truly is God's nation and God's people. And uh, oftentimes we think of the United States as this is uh, God's country. It was started on Christian principles. And uh, it, it, although it's deteriorating in, in name, we ascribe our, you know, God's, God is on our currency, right? In God we trust. 
And so we think of this country as a, as a Christian nation as well. And I don't want us to be to try to draw too close of a connection between the United States and Israel in the application of the book of Habakkuk. But what I want us to think about is the things that God teaches and talks about, if that is how God handled things with his nation, then it's certainly a possibility that that's how he would do it with our nation as well. Uh, so this isn't, uh, I'm not speaking a prophetic word saying this is what's going to happen in the United States. I'm saying this is what did happen in Israel, and maybe it just shows us God could do something like this in the United States or in other countries as well. And I think if he did it with his chosen nation, his people who were the apple of his eye, then there's no nation that's off limits. He could do it with anybody. Um, it's within the realm of possibility. Um, so what we do when we look at a passage like this or a book like this, we're learning about God's character. And we're looking at what he has done in the past. And so it can be very informative to us. Sometimes we say things like, well, I just don't think God would do that if someone says, I think this might happen, or I'm worried about this might happening, or I hope this happens, and, and people say, I just don't think God would do that. But we need to listen to, to what God has done in the past. Sometimes he's done things that we, if we didn't hear about him, we would have said, I don't think God would do that. And so it's informative so we can learn about God's character and how he is consistent and reliable. Uh, so this may be an explanation may be an explanation of what we are going through or what we will go through. And maybe it won't be at all. Maybe it'll be something we can see someone else going through and we can get an understanding of what's going on in the world. But I want to think about it in the context of Israel, first of all, because that's who it's written to. And then second of all, uh, how God works, his character. So we can't rule out certain actions because we know God better. We say, okay, he has done this in the past. But then also I want us to think about this in the context of any personal struggles. Sometimes we have personal struggles with people that, that spurs the question, why are these bad things happening? And parts of this we can look at and say, okay, this gives us some insight, maybe not the full answer, but okay, I've been having this problem with this person or these people, and it seems to be persisting. So that would fall in this category of Habakkuk saying, why are these bad things happening? And then finally, thinking about it spiritually as well. We do have spiritual enemies, and Satan is active in the world, and, and we see evil things happening, and sometimes people wonder, why is it that Satan is given such a long leash? Why is he allowed to be doing these things? And that would fall into this category also. So let's look at Habakkuk's question and, and complaint and what he cries out to God about. He said, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not hear? Or cry to you violence, and you will not save? So he's saying evil is prevailing. I'm calling out for help, but you're not answering me. It's as if you don't hear me. You're not saving me from this big problem. And what it was was within his own people, the nation of Israel. Why do you make me see iniquity, and why do you idly look at wrong? So it's like, I have to look at this, and you are just idly looking at it. I wish I could change all this wrong that's happening. You can, and you're just looking. It seems as if God is idle, as if God isn't caring. Uh, sometimes we feel this way ourselves about the world or about our nation. Maybe some people feel this about their families or lo loved ones. He says, destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. And so we definitely see in the news about violence, and it's heartbreaking. Uh, and there's probably people who hear my voice that are victims of violence as well, and they're experiencing it, sadly. Uh, all of us experience contention, right? Tension between people, and that can be a burden on people's hearts when it's t with people you love and care about, or the t maybe it's not someone you care about, but there's someone that's in your life, and this contention is strong, and it's just a, a daily weight and a burden on you. This is what Habakkuk is, ta is asking about. He says, so the law is paralyzed, and justice never goes forth. 
For the wicked surround the righteous. Uh, let me look at, I think we're missing a part here. So, uh, so justice goes forth perverted. I don't think that made it to the next slide. In the Bible here it says, so justice goes forth perverted. All right? So he's saying, your laws, God, are, it's as if they're paralyzed, having no power, useless in our society. It was the society that was founded on God's laws. They were supposed to live according to it. And, and Habakkuk is the, the voice of the Lord. He's one teaching God's laws and God's ways. And he's saying, your laws, it, it seems, is paralyzed. It never goes forth. And some, we can feel that way with Jesus' teachings and God's laws and, and morality. It's like it seems to not have any effect in the world. What are we doing? The wicked surround the righteous. Jesus knows what that feels like. Was it, wasn't he surrounded by wicked men? And that's how we feel sometimes. That's, how Habakkuk, that's what Habakkuk saw. And he was sick of seeing it, so he called out to God. And because of all this, justice goes forth perverted it's it's twisted it doesn't work and sometimes sometimes i preach and i and i use the word justice and if i use the word justice i know everybody's thinking is he using the word justice the way the politically left use the word justice well, why is he doing that right or some people say is he using it the way the right use the word justice or why is he using the word justice that word's been hijacked or however you feel about it uh just for further notice when i I try not to speak for myself when I'm preaching from God's word. So if I'm using the word justice, it's because I've seen it in the Bible. And in my mind, it's just whatever the right thing is supposed to be. And uh, hopefully, uh, it's my intention that as I'm doing that, I've, I've not got some specific situation in my mind uh, that maybe you've read about in the news. But whatever the right thing is, that's, that's what justice is. God knows what justice is. And Habakkuk was right to say justice goes forth perverted. It's not happening. It's being twisted and ruined. So that's how he's feeling. And uh, that's how we, we feel at times as well. And let's look at God's response to this. God says, look among the nations and see, wonder and be astounded, for I'm doing a work in your days that you would not believe if told. All right, now don't look ahead in your Bibles. All right, don't cheat. Just think about this verse here. What is God getting ready to say? Oftentimes I enjoy, tr we should try to read God's word um, at times as if it's the very first time you've ever read it. and You don't know what's going to happen next. I like doing that with Jesus' words, with uh, the apostles' words. And here, let, imagine you're Habakkuk and God says this, like, What's going to happen? What's God getting ready to say? Is he going to say those wicked people that have surrounded you, they're going to get struck down? Remember David and Goliath? Or maybe the Messiah is going to show up finally. The Jesus is going to show up and we're going to see things that we wouldn't believe. The righteous will finally prevail after all this. Waiting to see what is God going to say next? He says, behold, I'm raising up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation. All right, so Israel was having their conflicts, and the wicked were prevailing and surrounding the righteous. And at the time, the Assyrian Empire was this kingdom that was ruling, and, and they were terrible people. The Assyrians, their capital was Nineveh. Remember how terrible they were. And uh, they, were the, they were the kingdom at the time. And God is saying, behold, I'm going to raise up the Chaldeans or the Babylonians, another kingdom, a bitter and a hasty nation. So he's not promising salvation or a Messiah. He's saying there's going to be a, an even worse kingdom that's going to show up. And this kingdom, they marched through the breadth of the earth to seize dwellings, not their own. So they're a, a, viol they're a, they're a capturing nation, right? Uh, they, they take things that are not their own. They're bitter. They're hasty. They march through the breadth of the earth. It says they are dreaded and fearsome. Their justice and dignity go forth from themselves. 
This is a, God has said, behold, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in a dreaded nation, a fearsome nation. You're asking why this problem in Israel is going on. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in this dreadful and fearful people. Justice and dignity go forth from themselves. They are their own standard of justice. They're not checking God's word to see what's the right thing to do. They're not listening to the, the whole of the people saying, what's the right, those, those uh, Assyrians, they were a bad nation. What's the best thing to do? They're saying, what's best for us? And they, they're their own standard. Their horses are swifter than leopards, more fierce than the evening wolves. All right, so they're a ferocious people. Their horsemen press proudly on. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle, swift to devour. They're not coming to help anybody. They're coming to devour. And they shouldn't even be there. They come from afar. They're coming from some distant place into God's nation. God's nation Israel was just a small nation getting swallowed up with all the others. God said this is what he's planning on doing. They're powerful. The picture gets worse. They all come for violence. All their faces forward. They gather captives like sand. So they're fearsome. They're violent. They're capturing people from afar. At kings they scoff, and at rulers they laugh. So they, they, they uh, mock and scoff at all other authority or legitimate claims to what should be done. They just laugh at it. Because they're, they're powerful. What, what can anyone else do? It doesn't matter if you say so. They laugh at kings and at rulers. They laugh at every fortress, for they pile up earth and take it away. So they're talking about building siege work. They scoff at any authority or any claim to authority, any power or force. That doesn't bother them. They're stronger. They're ungodly. It says, uh, then they sweep by like the wind and go on guilty men whose own might is their God. God's not saying they're good people. They're bad people. They're guilty. And they're idolatrous. They worship themselves. But God said, this is what I'm going to do. He said, look among the nations and see and wonder and be astounded, for I am doing a work in your days. This is what God's response is. This is what's going to happen. And uh, remember what I said. I'm not saying this is a prophecy. I'm not, I'm not claiming that. I'm not hoping this happens either. I feel like my duty as the shepherd of this little flock uh, beneath Jesus Christ, the, the good shepherd and the true shepherd, I need to prepare us and teach us. This is what God has done in the past. If, if I only preach uh, through rose-colored glasses and say, I hope the best, I think everything's going to work out fine, and it doesn't, we're all going to be shipwrecked, right? If I preach this way and say, maybe this might happen, and it doesn't, we're all going to say, <laughs> right? But we're not shipwrecked. But if, if something terrible does happen, we can say, all right, things aren't spiraling out of control. God is choosing to do something like he did in Habakkuk's day. And in our personal lives, we have conflict and struggle. Sometimes God ordains conflict and struggle without saying it's good. He's not saying it's a good thing, but he's got something else in mind that's going to happen. I want to remind us what Jesus said in the, the Beatitudes, where he's, he said, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So remember, part of Habakkuk's complaint was that the wicked surround the righteous. There were righteous people there in Israel. There were people that were following God's law. They were doing all the right things, and they were being persecuted. And then... The Assyrians came along and intensified it. And then God is saying, and now the Babylonians are going to come along and intensify it. So because they were doing the right thing, they were still experienced persecution. They didn't get excused. Habakkuk was a righteous man. He's in Israel. He's going to suffer under these violent and wicked, guilty men as well. Sometimes God does that. And he's wise and he's good all the time. So we're going to have to just trust him. If that happens, it's not because things, because we have failed. If we're doing what is right and righteous, it might be because we're in a group of others who are not. So Jesus said, blessed 
are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So you got these Israelites who are being persecuted, and they said, oh, I, I may not be able to get what is rightfully mine in the kingdom of Israel, but I know I'll get the kingdom of heaven. And then the Assyrians came along, and they said, all right, I don't have a part in this Assyrian kingdom, but mine is the kingdom of heaven. And then the Babylonians, and they could say the same thing. Uh, interesting, as I was meditating on the, the Beatitudes this week, earlier, a few verses earlier, one of the earlier Beatitudes, Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. They will be filled. If you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you'll get it. But you'll also get persecution for that righteousness that you hungered and thirsted for. It's just the way that it is. So if we experience persecution, it's not because Satan is winning. It's not because God is sitting idly by and does not care. Somehow, Jesus has told us it's a blessing to be persecuted because of righteousness, because then yours is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus was persecuted for righteousness. The apostles were. Hundreds of years of the church has experienced persecution for righteousness, and they've also received a blessing for it. So I don't want us to become terrified at the prospect. But I do want us to be informed that it might happen. God has done it. Um, it was directed at the wicked people, but his right, the wicked people had surrounded the righteous people, and the whole nation got conquered. Now let's look briefly at Habakkuk's response to this. Uh, he responds, this is the beginning of his next question, and we're just going to look at this initial statement. And Habakkuk is God's prophet. And so even as he's asking questions, God is speaking through him and teaching even through his, his questions and even in ways that maybe Habakkuk didn't fully understand. But Habakkuk said, Are you not from everlasting, O Lord my God, my Holy One? Are you not from everlasting? So remember earlier he said, uh, um, uh, The law is paralyzed and justice never goes forth. Justice never goes forth. It's perverted. But in verse 4, he said, justice never goes forth. But then here he says, God, you are from everlasting. He couldn't really say justice never happens because he's finite. He's in one place. Up until then, justice didn't occur. But God is everlasting. And so we can't say justice will never happen. What is right, what should happen to God's people and this world that's God's creation it never happens. We can't say that because we're only in the present. But God is everlasting, and he knows how things are going to end. And so he said, uh, God, you are everlasting. And he also says, God, are you not the Holy One? God is holy. And we must remind ourselves that he is perfectly sinless, unable to do any kind of a wrong motive or anything sinful at all. God is everlasting. We're in the present. And so things look bad now, but he's outside of that. He knows how it's going to end. He's not hoping for it. He's writing it. He's, this is his plan. He's also perfectly holy, and he only does what is good. He cannot tolerate wickedness. And so we need to rely on his holiness. Not only is he pure in his holiness, but that also means he's very different from us. His way, as high as the heavens are above the earth, that's how high his ways are above our ways. And so that helps us to, to grapple with this idea when bad things are happening. But then Habakkuk says, we shall not die. We shall not die. This is the logical conclusion that God is holy and good and powerful. I'm reminded of the words that Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus is the life. Jesus said, even if you die, yet shall you live for those who have faith in Jesus. That's how we shall not die. It doesn't mean, in a sense, we will not stay dead, right? Jesus died. Peter died. Paul died. Every Christian we've known for more than 100 years ago, <laughs> they've died, right? But we, but we will not have a true death. The, the, what the world sees as death is just, Entrance into eternal life. All right? So we need to see things in the big picture and not the small picture. 
Uh, death did not frighten the apostles because they saw Jesus rise from the dead. And they saw that he had even a truer life than he ever had even before that. And so we have that same hope. And then he says, O Lord, you have ordained them as a judgment, and you, O rock, have established them for reproof. All right, he's talking about that, those uh, Chaldeans, those Babylonians that are coming in. He says, oh, okay, God, I hear you. You say this is what you're going to do. You're going to bring in this hasty, ungodly, idolatrous, violent nation. You've ordained it. They're a judgment. You've ordained them for reproof. I think, I believe that we need to look at this in two ways. Lots of times prophecy is given in, in more than one way. And in, in one sense, we see they, God is sending them to, repro- to be a source of reproof and judgment on the ungodly. All right? And so the, the righteous were surrounded, but the ungodly, God is going to take care of them through this other ungodly nation. And this actually isn't news to Habakkuk. Moses said, all right, we're going into the promised land to take the land away from this ungodly people. It's not because you're righteous, but it's because they're wicked. And when you go in, if you sin, God's going to take it away from you. And he did that, not from a people that were more righteous than them, but from other wicked people. And then that's why the Assyrian Empire showed up. Israel sinned against God, and God used the wicked Assyrians to conquer Israel as a judgment and a reproof that Moses prophesied about and said, when that happens, repent. And now the, the Chaldeans are doing it as well. And God's not saying they're good, but he's, they're just they're a sword in his hand to bring judgment on the ungodly. And the, the righteous are there in their midst, but God is their rock. The other way we can look at this is to say, you have ordained them for judgment and for reproof. They're going to get their judgment and reproof as well. And so that gives us hope. An ungodly, God may use an ungodly people and an ungodly uh, desires of people as a reproof and a discipline, uh, but we need to have hope that God disciplines those he loves. It's for their good to bring them to repentance and a stronger, uh, uh, have more righteousness in their life. But also we have this hope that those bad ones that God might use for his good purposes, their judgment day is coming too. They're not going to get away with it. And so I think we can see this verse in both of those ways. They've been ordained for judgment towards and reproof of others, but they're going to have theirs as well. But the most encouraging thing here is that he says, uh, you've ordained them, God, O rock. You've established them. Romans 13, 1, something we need to be reminded of. <clears throat> Romans 13, 1 says, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. This is the thing I want you to, to sink into our hearts. There is no authority except from God. And even here with these this wicked, idolatrous people, he says, O oh God, You have established them. It doesn't mean they're right. It it doesn't mean that we need to cheer for them, but to say God is still in control. Even when things are going bad, you've established it. There is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. So that gives us hope. All right, my God is still in control. So the hope that I want to see from this final verse here God, you've ordained it, and you are a rock. O rock, you have established it. So the country or the world may be completely unstable, but our God is the rock that our church is planted on, and God's people are planted on the rock. We may feel insecure, but we're not because God is our rock. Remember Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High rests in the shadow of the Almighty. So there were righteous people that heard Habakkuk's Habakkuk's oracle, and they're like, okay, we got to gear up. God is our rock. I've been surrounded by the wicked people. I've been doing the right thing, but okay, here comes the Babylonians. 
It's a good thing that I'm built on the solid rock on God, on Jesus Christ, on, on nothing else. He preserves the ones he loves in the big picture, not in the small picture. There were, you can look at aspects of Jesus' life and say, well, he didn't preserve him, but that was in the small picture, not the big picture. You could say you can do the same with each one of the saints that followed God faithfully. Every one of the martyrs, you can say, well, God didn't preserve him or her. But in the big picture, he did. They're triumphant and they're going to rule and reign with Christ. So we need to receive this passage prayerfully, asking for wisdom from the Lord. I want to remind us that Peter said this and he, all, he quoted Isaiah, who also said it. All flesh is like grass and its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. So God's word here remains forever. It's true. We have learned about who God is and the things that he does. We need to ask for wisdom to say, all right, prepare us, Lord, for whatever it might be. Again, we don't need to hope for something like this. That's not what we're wanting. God also said that if we repent, and call out on his name. He, could, he, he ushers in forgiveness. And he could, he could, he br he's brought periods of revival to countries. That could happen. That's what we should be praying for. Praying for peace and revival and true righteousness. But we want to know who God is so we can be prepared for whatever might happen in the future. Let's go and stand together and sing about our rock so that we don't forget as the world gets increasingly unstable, Jesus Christ is our rock, and we are not unstable because we're not dependent on anything but the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Brian has given us something to think about this week. We all go through different things throughout our weeks and experience different. What ground do you stand on? Is it sinking?